Greetings everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are. I hope you're well and I hope you're safe. Thank you for joining me, another very special cooking class coming at you today where yes, we are gifting away a copy of my award-winning cookbook, Eat Your Way Slim and Healthy. I have copies of this book to gift away, which means all you have to do is stay watching, answer a very simple question. It's going to be food related, healthy food related. Answer a very simple question and then Mahi will pick one lucky winner who gets to nominate someone who they would like or who they would think might like this as a bit of a Christmas present. So that's why it's a gift away. You get to nominate a person. Um, I will sign the book with for that person and then we'll wrap it up in Christmas wrapping, pop it in the post for them and that will be Christmas sent on to them all courtesy of your amazing win. And if you don't already have a copy of that book, then might even give you one as well. <laughs> we love giving away and of course, why not when we know how well this book works. So we're cooking straight out of the book again tonight. And tonight we are doing a recipe, it's on page 82 of the cookbook. In the lunch section, we did breakfast, um, the last one we did, which was on Tuesday, a couple days ago, we did a breakfast recipe, which was my chicken egg fouillon with the most delicious gravy, which by the way, I um, finished half of it today for lunch and it was amazing. Um, and today we are doing what I call a cucumber and beef sandwich. It is my idea of a sandwich, only very, very healthy. I'm gonna show you guys how to make that. It is so incredibly quick and easy so delicious and it um, is going to help to set the tone for our question tonight. So if you'd like to win a copy, a uh, gifted away of Eat Your Way Slim and Healthy, the question for tonight is, um, this dish by the way is requires no cooking. So the question is, what is your favorite go-to healthy dish that does not need any cooking whatsoever? This is a good one, but let us all know and inspire, inspire us with what your favorite healthy no cook go-to dishes that is the question for today feel free to answer it in the meantime let's um make some cucumber and beef sandwiches sandwiches it's even cool to say right come on down to my bench let's get into it so as i was saying no cooking involved but there are cucumbers involved because one of the things about this is we're going to be obviously it's a, it's a sandwich but not really because there's no bread what we'll be doing is using the cucumber these gorgeous Lebanese cucumbers we're using them to create the the outside of our sandwich so to speak and we're filling it with lots of delicious things so when it comes to cucumbers i love cucumbers a couple reasons why they are firstly so incredibly refreshing right we know that about them and if you decide to you want to make this i would definitely go for a smaller firmer sweeter cucumber like the Lebanese cucumber is perfect and you need about 300 grams so for one portion and this is a really good portion for lunch 300 grams of cucumber is a lot of cucumber to eat but not like this because you feel like you're having a sandwich so 300 grams of cucumber is about three small cucumbers it's a lot i know if you were to eat that on its own you would get bored pretty quickly but this way we can make sure that we get all that gorgeous cucumber into us and yes cucumber has got absolutely no fat really high here's a good little fact for you guys really high in vitamin k which is potassium in fact in this 300 grams of cucumber which is about you know 10 and a half ounces 11 ounces of cucumber there is 60 percent of your recommended daily intake of potassium vitamin k so that's how amazing cucumbers are also got vitamin c believe it or not there's even protein in here and fiber high in antioxidants you cannot go wrong with cucumber and of course one thing that you guys probably already know is that cucumber is really good for rehydrating your body because it's full of water so first thing you want to do is you want to take a peeler and just give your cucumber just a gentle peel down the side you don't have to like take all the peel off some people actually like to leave the peel on and eat it like that but i'll leave that up to you so you want to peel the skin off and then taking up a little knife, I'm just going to knob the ends off because, you know, that is inedible. So pff, don't want to eat that. So let's knob the ends off there. And then you need to just cut them in half. Straight down the middle. Just like that. So really easy. And as I was saying, we need three cucumbers for this particular dish. Three small to medium, but like I said, you're after about 300 grams 
or 10.5 ounces in total of cucumber. Now we are going to be adding some flavors to it because I'm sure you guys are looking at that going on its own, it's pretty boring. And I've got to agree with you, it can get a little bit much if you're just munching on cucumbers. I know some people who love them. I was speaking with this one lady and she, she was telling me that she eats one telegraph, which is a big one, one telegraph cucumber every single day. She loves it. And I was very impressed. That is quite, quite the undertaking. Don't you agree? So our three cucumbers are done now. We've basically got space for three sandwiches, which is amazing. So we'll cut the last one down the middle. The next thing you want to do is you want to think about removing some of those seeds because we need to make a little bit of an indentation down the um, middle of the cucumber. That's where all the flavor is going to live. So it is important. You don't have to scrape right down. I'm just removing some of the seeds. And I do find that removing the seeds like this is really helpful if you take this to work. So you're making it and you're not eating it straight away because it is the seeds of the cucumber which will cause them to get quite soggy, which is never nice. Soggy vegetables, not good. Unless they're supposed to be soggy. This is not supposed to be soggy. This is supposed to be really lovely and crunchy. So if you were taking this to work or taking this to school or it was leaving your house, so you weren't eating it straight away or you were making it for later, what I would suggest you do is you prep up like this, but you don't complete the um, sandwich, you actually do that just before you're ready to eat. So everything's sliced and ready to go, but you don't actually put it all together because you want to keep the cucumber, as I was saying, as crunchy as possible. So it stays lovely and refreshing. So now we've got these lovely hollows, and I'll just work with a couple at a time. We've got this lovely hollow, as you can see, in our cucumber. So because they're lovely and hollow, it is most fitting that we put flavor in there. So the first flavor I'm going to do is just a sprinkle, a little gen gentle sprinkle of salt. Goes on there, mineral salt. Goes on there first. I have in my little jar here, look at that, isn't that luscious? That is the most gorgeous, gorgeous pesto that I made. In the recipe, I call for my oil-free pesto. The recipe, of course, is in the yellow book as well. Um, but, you know, I think in the recipe it calls for basil. I didn't have as much basil, so I also put rocket, I had arugula, so I filled it up with rocket, and look at that colour, isn't, that, that looks gorgeous, right, absolutely stunning, so all you need to do, with my little teaspoon, easier with a teaspoon when it comes to this, is you want to fill one of the hollows with your wonderful oil-free pesto, oh, already, it's just made the, the cucumber has now gone, gone to a whole new level of excitement just with that little little bit there so that's the first one and then in the next hollow i go for this this is my little jar of mustard isn't it tiny <laughs> it's nearly a kilo it's nearly two pounds of mustard i know i have um i have a bit of a thing for dijon mustard and i have a bit of a thing for this brand, which is, um, it's spelled M-A-I-L-L-E, -L -E, but it's pronounced May. It is a French mustard, Dijon mustard, and it is by far my absolute favorite. So you're taking your favorite mustard, mine, as I said, is this one, because it's sugar-free, gluten-free, has no nasties, but has so much flavor. And these guys, you, know, you can buy May at most supermarkets, including Costco, which is where I get my big jar from. It's about seven bucks a jar at Costco. You can't go wrong, that is a lot of mustard. Um, so May have been making mustard since 1747. They know what they're doing. It is stunning, it is stunning, it is absolutely gorgeous. So we've got these two beautiful flavor bombs happening right there. So now we just need to think about, would you like to add some meat? So I have um, some sliced, roasted meat here so we had um a little bit of roasted uh lamb on the weekend the kids had some roasted lamb this is the leftovers in the recipe i use beef you could do roasted beef you could do roasted chicken it doesn't really matter you could do anything you like but i had this lamb leftover and i thought my goodness why not thinly slice that lamb and then we've got this wonderful filling for our sandwich. So now we've got flavor, we've got a little bit of protein going on there as well. Let's now move on to give it some herbs, some fresh herbs. And it's up to you what sort of herbs you want to use. You could use basil, uh, you could use mint, you could use coriander. Look, you could use anything you want here, but I, I would definitely suggest 
that you add additional herbs here because it's really going to help with that lovely flavor explosion which is what we want when it comes to making something like this because you know you're doing your body such incredible um, favors by all this wonderful vegetable that you're eating but you also want to make sure that it tastes delicious so that you keep on eating it and don't get bored so that's where things like pesto and sugar-free gluten-free mustard and fresh herbs that's where these things really come into their own because they give us the opportunity to eat all this goodness and not get bored which is so important because the last thing you want is some type of meal fatigue all right your lid goes on like that and you now have literally oh no you don't it falls over first once the lid goes on like that you have one of the most gorgeous little treats that would be so easy to eat right so easy to eat let's put that down there i'm going to make one more actually i'm going to make two more but i'll show you very quickly so it's, it's simple i like to work with a teaspoon just because it's so much easier to get you know the pesto down one side just like that and then of course we're going to swap sides and we're going to lay the mustard down the other side look if you don't like mustard and i i know that this people who don't like mustard actually exist i didn't realize this until a, you know until a while ago um when our son decided he didn't like mustard <laughs> and i was like what how's that possible and this mustard isn't like a real peppery one hence why you can see i'm kind of layering it on quite thick so you can do that but if you don't like mustard then you don't have to add it just add like pesto on both sides you know you could add definitely if you wanted to add a bit of um, black pepper I would totally suggest that is a good idea because it just gives it a, once again you know a little bit of a bite which is what we all want a little bit of herbs go down there this, it, like literally this is one of my one of the little cutie dishes that is, is so easy to do and it's pretty versatile I'm going to show you another variation in a second of what you can you know how you can stuff it and you've got these cute little things just waiting to be eaten oh shucks, i don't want to eat that now all right last one i've got one other way that i want to show you guys um that is just an option yeah i love options you know, we're speaking about not getting meal fatigue and getting bored with your food so if you wanted to instead of having like a cold roast beef or a cold lamb or you know cold chicken or whatever because cold food can get a bit get a bit let's be honest it can get a bit you know boring if you're having it all the time unless of course where you are is really really hot and then it's necessary and i'm looking forward to reading what your favorite cold go-to um, foods are as well but if you wanted to just mix it up a bit just just a little bit here's another thought for you Behind me in my little frying pan, I pre-cooked off some little turkey meatballs, just some little ones, little cute little turkey meatballs. They're literally probably like half the size of a normal meatball. And I was cooking off some turkey meatballs and I was like, huh, I'm gonna make them a bit smaller because wouldn't they just be so cute if we serve them like a meatball sub? I think I'm gonna get three in. Like a meatball sub in our cucumber. With, and also they're a little they're still a little bit warm so remember i was talking about how you can get a little sometimes your your palate can get a little bit bored if you're always eating cold food or you're always eating hot food and you want a bit of a change well this is actually a change all in one dish because you've got the warm meatballs and the cold refreshing cucumber which i just think is absolutely fabulous a little sprinkle of salt and there you have, <laughs> oh my gosh, check it out. You have a little meatball sub. Isn't that fabulous? Just gorgeous. I know, right? I'm going to leave that there. I want, I want to put on a plate. I want to, it's actually my, now that I've put them all together, it's already my favorite because lo it looks incredible. It looks like you just want to dive into it because you know that it's going to be so delicious, especially turkey meatballs. And then my, yes, the meatball, by the way, the meatball recipe, is also in the book as well mm -hmm. if you're looking for it it is in here and i literally used the meatball recipe from the book and then i just made them really small but they're probably 20 grams each which is like about 0 0.7 ounces 
So they're little tiny meatballs, cooked them up in the frying pan, um, and then thought they would make the perfect little meatball sub, as well as, of course, our classic, our classic, well, lamb and cucumber sub as well. And I'm going to give Mahi a couple of minutes because he's going to choose our winner. In the meantime, while he's looking, he's already got it. Yep. Wow, he's already got it. I, so I'm going to just, keep, I'm just going to continue just a little bit more because I've got a, a couple more stuff okay. that I want to say about cucumbers before I announce the winner of today's gift away. Um, one of the other reasons we talked about when it comes to cucumbers is they're zero fat, which means really low in calories. No, we, I know we don't count calories, but in case, <laughs> fell over. In case you were wondering, cucumber is exceptionally low in calories. Something ridiculous like 45 grams of, um, 45 calories, sorry, and 300 grams of cucumbers. So extremely low in calories, but you, you knew that anyway. But the other thing that I really love about cucumbers is that they have fiber, which is good because that helps to keep us regular. So it keeps our bowel movements regular, which is really important. It also has water, high concentrations of, of fluids, of water, which once again helps to maintain our regularity when it comes to bowel movements. But the other really cool thing about your digestion when it comes to cucumbers is they're really high in pectin. And pectin helps to keep our muscles that are in our digestive system contracting and working and it actually speeds up the muscles. And it's those muscles that are responsible for helping to push the food through your system. So some people do have a bit of a lazy digestive system. It takes them ages to process food. But pectin, which you also find in green apples, there's pectin in apples. Pectin, of course, now in cucumbers, as you know, helps to keep those muscles active and helps to keep pushing food right throughout our entire digestive system, which is so important because we want to regularly be having a good clean out to make sure nothing's kind of hanging around that should have been there. So cucumbers are very cool in all those sort of ways, plus super refreshing, high in vitamin C, high in vitamin K, all those wonderful things. And now we're going to announce the winner, because I think it is time. The winner of um, today's Eat Your Way Slim and Healthy gift away is... Robin Sin. Is Robin Sin. Now Robin is based in Victoria. And if you could please read us Robin's... Answer. Thank you, Mahi. Nothing better than berries, coconut yogurt, and fiber syrup on a warm afternoon. And she's got another word. She said, oh my God, and the crunch, maize balls, yellow, prepare <laughs> your afternoon to get it back. Okay, she had a couple of really good ones. Robin had a couple of great suggestions in there. Her first suggestion for her go-to cold, no cooking required snack is definitely one of my go-tos as well. Coconut yogurt, berries, and fiber syrup which is such a wonderful little treat. You, it's hard to believe it's healthy, it's hard to believe. And then she also talked about how much she loves the ginger crunch balls as well, which once again is a no cook treat. So congratulations to Robin Sand from Victoria. You are the winner. You get to nominate one lucky person to get given a copy of this book. If you could please send us an email, Robin, to admin at bridgetshealthykitchen.com. Let us know that you're Thursday's winner and then we will organize with you to make sure we get this in the post so it gets to your lucky recipient before Santa Claus because we want to beat Santa to the, to the punch to make sure it gets there before Christmas Day. So congratulations to the beautiful Robin uh, and thank you to everyone who's joined us tonight for another edition of our Cook the Book, Cook the Award winning book, which is very exciting. We've got one more class left which is happening this Saturday. And I'm going to be cooking from the new section. Because remember, this is the revised section of my first yellow cookbook, which was Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. This is the revised edition. And this edition has a dessert section. Yes. So we will be cooking one of the gorgeous, super healthy recipes from the dessert section of the book. And of course, we will be gifting away more copies of Eat Your Way Slim and Healthy. So thank you for joining me. I hope you try this. I hope you do. It is, I can't wait. I'm about to go sit down and try it right now. So happy days are ahead. So thanks guys for joining me. I look forward to spending time with you again in the kitchen. Everyone be well. Be safe. Until next time. Bye.